Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy and it's a snowy afternoon here in Michigan. I thought that I would come up with a new video for today and I wanted to address one of the Flat Earth's main claims and that is gravity does not exist. You see, their mainstay is that it's not gravity that holds us to the surface of the ground, it's electrostatics. And I thought it would be interesting to have a look at that because, you know, we know the charge of the Earth, we know the radius of the Earth, and we know Coulomb's law, which means that we can calculate the charge I would have to have in order to experience that 833 newtons of downward force that I do. So let's go ahead and have some fun with math. So let's go ahead and get some facts together first. My weight is 833 newtons, and that's my mass times the downward acceleration of gravity at 9.8 meters per second squared. So here's my weight, 833 newtons. Now, the universal law of gravity, uh, as you may know, is the gravitational constant, big G, times mass one times mass two over the radius squared. Coulomb's law is very similar, and that is the force of electrostatic attraction is a constant K times charge one times charge two divided by the radius squared. Now you may notice that these are kind of similar, at least in form. However, big G and K are very different. And in physics, this is a very common form of an equation to relate two objects to each other based on the square of the radius between them. Now the charge of the Earth is about negative 500,000 coulombs, which is negative five times 10 to the fifth. Now with a little bit of algebraic manipulation over here, I can solve for what the charge on me would have to be. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here I've actually just isolated charge two, which is going to be the charge on me, and expressed it in terms of these other values. So my weight is 833 newtons, the radius of the Earth will be 6.371, times 10 to the 6 meters. K is 9 times 10 to the 9th. And Q1 will be 5 times 10 to the 5th. Let's go ahead and write those out and see if we can solve for it. So here are the numbers that we're talking about. Now we can go ahead and do a quick estimate of this to see kind of where we're standing. Uh, if we look at this as 8 times 6 squared divided by 9 divided by 5, as I have here, it's going to come out to around six and a half. So we've kind of got an idea of the magnitude of this. It's not 14, it's not 0.3. So the, the range is going to be somewhere between one and 10. So it doesn't really bother us too much when we look at powers of 10 next door. And then when we look at the powers of 10, we've got 10 to the two times 10 to the six squared, and that's going to be divided by 10 to the ninth times 10 to the fifth. So what we're dealing with is essentially 10 to the 14th over 10 to the 14th and that's one. So our final answer is going to be somewhere in the vicinity of 6.5. Now again, we rounded this, so that's 6.5 plus or minus one or two. We wanted to get this because we wanted to see whether or not that number was going to be greater than 10 or less than one. It's not. So let's go ahead and pull up a slide rule and we'll do the actual math. But let me show you how to calculate this real quick on a slide rule. Okay, so here's our cursor, and the first thing that we want to do is we want to put the cursor directly over 8.33, which is going to be about right there. So we'll put the nine directly over it. Then we're gonna multiply by 6.371. So here's six, there's 371, about right there. And we will do that again. So we'll put the index directly over our line here. That'll be about right there. And then last but not least, we'll divide it by five. And there we go. And here is our answer. Just a hair over 7.5. So given the Earth's charge of negative 500,000 coulombs, I would have to have a charge of 7.5 coulombs in order to have 833 newtons of downward force attracting me to the earth, which is what gravity does. Now, for those of you that have ever shuffled your feet on a dry day across a carpeted floor and touched a doorknob, that little snap of static electricity that you get is about a nano coulomb, about one billionth of a coulomb. So what's 7.5? Well, your average lightning bolt is somewhere between 10 and 100 coulombs. So in order for me to replace gravity with electrostatics, I would literally have to be Zeus. 
I would have to be able to shoot lightning bolts out of my hand. And if I were to step on the ground with my bare feet, the charge differential would be so great I would probably vaporize. So the bottom line of this is that it is not electrostatics. First of all, if my personal charge was seven and a half coulombs, I would literally be glowing. Not to mention the fact it would be extremely easy to measure that type of charge on my body. So using a classic modus tollens argument, if it was electrostatics holding me to the ground, I would have to have a charge of seven and a half coulombs. I do not have a charge of seven and a half coulombs on my body, thank God. So therefore, it's not electrostatics. Glad I could clear that up, Flat Earthers. And in our next episode, we're going to see why going to Antarctica did not change Critical Think's reference mass simply because it got colder. So we'll see you again soon, guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. If you want to have a look at the Telescope Fund or channel memberships, the links are right in the description. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.